Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, VRS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS. Greetings, race fans, and welcome to Apex Racing TV's presentation of the Radical Esports Cup. J.R. Gregory here with you on the call. Alongside me in the commentary booth, Tom Dillon, and in the production carrier, our friend and colleague, Joshua Wilkie. The star of today's show, the Radical SR10, 425 horsepower, only 725 kilos, no traction control, no ABS. And folks, we are showing the top split of the public server here, Friday 2100 GMT, as we do every week. So this is not a league race. This is not a private race. These are the public servers. So if you would like to give these radicals a try, go ahead and sign up and join us here, 21 GMT Friday, and you could appear on Apex Racing TV. And I say it every week, uh, these cars are a handful, but mastering the SR10 will make you better at every car you drive and upcoming schedule looks fantastic. Watkins Glen, Imola, Mount Panorama, Interlagos, Mosport, Barber, Sebring, Road America, and get this folks, green hell under the star circle that one that is going to be fantastic so here we are in week three road atlanta this track located just outside brazelton georgia first race here was a can-am event back in the fall of 1970 with vic elford on the pole and you porsche fans will know that name and over the past 50 years road atlanta has played host to f5000 camel gt trans am and the secca runoffs along with a busy slate of amateur track days and of course the 2024 main event this year will be the 10-hour Petit Le Mans. Today's configuration, 2.5 miles, 4 clicks, 12 corners. The current record was a 107.056 set in 2008 by a Peugeot LMP1 car. And I got to tell you, last year's fast lap at the Petit was a 109 in the rain by these phenomenal new prototypes, uh, IMSA prototypes. So we're going to see that record fall, I predict, this fall. And uh, Tom, uh, this track car combination is fantastic for a couple of reasons uh the radical loves that uh uphill charge into turn one it does uh have significant downforce in the higher speed corners you just have to brush the brakes and charge up that thing in fifth gear it's super super fun and uh the one part where i think they can kind of struggle is putting down the power in those low speed corners and we're going to see that out of the critical turn seven probably the most important corner on this track that leads to that long long back Back straight away where these radicals are going to show their ability to pick up a draft and gain significant speed uh, on, on that. So what are you looking for out of these radicals today? 
Well, absolutely. Turn seven going to be absolutely crucial. You you then go down the back straight flat out section through turn eight and turn nine. The two kinks before you hit the brakes is very very hard uh, for that turn at ten, which is the big chicane here at Road Atlantis. So uh, really, it's going to be all about that exit, as you say, and then getting on the brakes early uh, in at two or late, I should say in to turn 10 making sure you make your moves down at that part of the track but also plenty of other places uh, to make some moves there's a lot of heavy braking zones around this track a lot of um, corners that the radical really is going to glide around and, and that gives the drivers uh, a good opportunity but also i should mention you know we talk about how good the schedule is here in the radical uh, esports series over there on iRacing and uh, the reason that schedule is so good is because it is voted uh, by the people if you head over to radicalsimracing.com already uh, the votes for the schedule for next season uh, have been released so uh, we've been asked to uh, remind you of that fact that it's only so good because it's voted by the people and you can go over to radicalsimracing.com to go and vote now all right and uh, so true and uh, yeah and I we were just here, uh, Tom, before you joined us last season, and I got to say there was some wild action into turn one, two, and three wide uh, on numerous occasions. So we're going to see plenty of that today, as long as uh, along with fights over that entry into turn 10. So here is your grid. Packy Caruso will be your pole sitter. Next to him, Lucas Rees in the next row. Andreas Friedrich next to Meyer and Iani. Kiato Larson and Mika Hulken in there in row three. Sorensen next to Bussen in P7 and P8. Marco Weaver next to uh, Dennis Kyriakopoulos there in 9 and 10. Heinz Braun next to Samir Kadura in P11 and P12. And bringing up the rear, Michael During and Gabriel Berger in 13 and 14. And uh, as we wait for the lights to come up here, just a reminder, there is no pace lap here. So we're going to be starting these radicals off from a standing start on ice cold tires and uh that in itself can be a challenge we've seen some uh races turn on some of these launches and uh, i'd also point out we have a couple of our overall top 10 here on the grid today our uh, provisional top 10 on the season is weaver barry crusoe friedrich vitorino larson white keolis reitinen and braun so you're going to see some of the best radical pilots here in the world on our 2100 gmt grid here this afternoon as we wait for the time to tick down on our start here we must have somebody who has not entered the track but uh, we should see those lights come up here any moment and there they are and uh, that is caruso your pole sitter in the number two car he will be on the left and have the theoretical advantage into turn one if he gets off clean and we are green and caruso will get our get off green uh, get off clean and redrick friedrich excuse me has already jumped past lucas rees as we enter into turn one for the first time uncharacteristically nose to tail here we usually see quite a bit of side by side action there into turn uh, one on the start and they already have an off that is rees mad just to keep it off the wall but he's going to go through the grass and end up in dfl that is uh definitely far from the lead in race parlance and a pretty clean start so far tom Pretty clean start, just the one driver out of the 14 going off of the track. Everyone else seems to filter through uh, just about okay. Here's uh, a little bit of a move as we go down into the right-hander, not quite able to pull it off, trying to get uh, an ID on this driver who again looks down uh, to the inside line, has a tuck in behind once again. And the exit's so important here at Road Atlanta. We go down this big straight now, looking down the hill. They'll go uh, through what the figurative DRS sign is, a lap one of 19, and this looks like Sorensen is going to get the run on the outside line first. Huge braking zone of the lap, last, last braking zone of the lap into turn 10. Sorensen looks the outside line. There's a little bit of carnage as off the road goes Boosen, but Sorensen is through. That's the most important thing. Boosen has to rejoin the circuit. I don't know if he was given a help there. It's already there he go to the end of lap one. Yeah, Braun elbows out there trying to defend against Sorensen and uh, uh, the driver that we saw get the little kiss there uh, may have got the worst of it. And there's another driver out that is Hulkinen taking the uh, grass route there, uh, going back to his rally routes and hopefully he'll have a careful rejoin here. Oh my goodness, as we see Bussin make that beautiful maneuver there over turn three, a critical corner coming down the snake uh, and interesting in these radicals, you kind of have to hit the curb there. Radicals not a fan of getting off their wheels, but over that curb in turn three and down through the S's, 
A lot of them are going to be banging off those curbs as these radical drivers are on the ragged edge to get the most uh, the most out of these things. And we're going to see some epic lap times out of these cars as this one unfolds. And lap two of uh, 19, as you mentioned, the gap at the front of the field, not particularly huge. Uh, Caruso going to find himself under a little bit of pressure from Frederick here. There's a big, big slipstream you get down into this part of the track. And uh, at the moment, it looks like Caruso is just about going to hold on to uh, where he is. Three tenths of a second as uh, he goes out of the chicane and into turn one is where it's really going to be interesting. The very, very short lap here. Only one minute uh, 21 and point eight. They were on the first lap. One minute 16 one on that last lap. The fastest lap of the race right now being sat by the man in third. That's Myron uh, Yanni uh, at the moment. So really good lap for him. We'll see what Caruso uh, can do here as he goes out of turn two and down the hill through the sweeping S's here and uh, at the moment he's got a three tenths of a second gap but it seems to be narrowly increasing up to five tenths gaining two tenths through just the one corner but this battle uh, for the lead uh, I think all three of them actually going to start to battle soon enough uh, JR. Yeah, great camera work by Josh there as you see Caruso flogging. And here's Busan. He's going to peek inside a during, and he's going to get that done uh, going into that 6-7 complex. And, uh, you know, one of the things about making that pass in turn six is you come out of turn seven with the vanquish right on your tail. And uh, I want you to take a look at these gaps here coming down the front straight. Caruso had a 0.5 gap on Friedrich exiting turn seven, and you can see that dropping like a stone as uh, the draft goes to work on that long long, long back straightaway, and not a lot of passing so far into turn A, which is a little surprising based on our experience last season where it was nonstop action there. And uh, as to the battle between Caruso, Friedrich, and Iani, it may be that Friedrich is happy just biding his time, hanging behind Caruso, and knowing that uh, if he can just stick with him and he's there in a close P2 on the last lap, Caruso is going to be a sitting duck due to the massive slipstream of these radicals. Yeah, and this is where uh, really race strategy plays into uh, their hands. They're probably going to be some kind of back market traffic later on in the race that they would require one of our drivers to make a mistake, of course, you would think. Uh, but there might be a little bit of traffic starting to, to be a factor later on in this race. The question for Frederick is, do you stay behind, uh, play this sort of risky game where you leave it to the last lap, or uh, do you dive now and try and get yourself a little bit of a gap? It's so difficult to build a gap around this truck that that might not be his preferred option but i suspect if we watch on board here as we ride on board at 155 mile an hour gaining a huge amount of time on caruso i suspect he's going to back out of throttle and listen to that that's exactly what he does he's content running in formation at the moment but the problem is you get this sometimes in ovals i've had it before jr and oval races uh, inside of iRacing and, and other games as well you decide you're going to in a race like this where you've got the pace to overtake the leader you're going to leave it to the last lap and you make a mess of it on the last lap. It's such a risky game to run, but look at that. A tenth of a second faster. The fastest man on the track at the moment is Weaver, though, in fifth position. Yeah, and speaking of mistakes, I, I'm not. we uh, didn't catch it, but it looks like Rees has bend it and uh, that radical is uh, sitting smoldering in the pits and uh, Josh is going to take a look and see if he can come up with that. But Rees having some sort of fatal problem here. And here we are uh, watching him cresting the hill there. And, uh, oh, yeah, just gets a little sideways there. And, uh, huh, interesting. I was expecting an, expecting an impact there, not seeing anything. Oh, and he's back on the track. Uh, you know, according to my timing tower, he had taken a tow there. And uh, interesting. I, he may, Maybe he picked up some suspension damage someplace else, but definitely didn't hit anything there. Uh, not sure what's going on with Reese. No, I'm not sure at all, actually. As here we go back to the battle uh, for the lead of the race. As Yanni uh, looks to be inside there for a second. I'm not really sure uh, why he was taking such a line, but he did anyway. Maybe hoping he'd get the overspeed on the inside line. But either way, it stays line of stern uh, at the front of the field. I think the problem for Yanni here right now uh, is that he hasn't really got the power of that slipstream on the car in third place and hasn't been able to uh, gain too much of a gap on Larson just behind. Here is uh, Karakopoulos, uh, looks to the, well, actually looks to defend the outside line. Down the inside goes Sorensen. That's a really well-made move into turn one, but Karakopoulos is back to the outside line. We'll turn to the inside for the right-hander. Sorensen 
knows where to put his car though and is able to hold on for the time being but that number eight is really starting to push back at him not really an overtaking opportunity this part of the track is Busan uh, getting involved in this battle as well we'll be interested to see uh, what happens out of turn seven here as Busan is in the slipstream now of Kurokopoulos who might find himself losing two places in one lap but eventually gets the run on that outside line and uh, Busan has to stay where he is in ninth yeah, Busson showing his nose there. I'm, I'm not sure that really helped him. That might have actually uh, added to the gap uh, of Kyriakopoulos there. But it'll be interesting to see what develops here down the back straight. And looking at our timing tower, Heinz Braun, uh, as we've seen out of him uh, on a couple of these events, our current hard charger, he's moved all the way up uh, into P6, five positions from his qualifying position of p11 and here's some action in turn 10 and uh my goodness last time this was non-stop folks and uh as this one develops and we get closer to the end people become more willing to take risks we're going to see some more action in turn 10 and in turn one as you're seeing here and that is Sorensen around the outside of Kyriakopoulos and uh just the beginning of the side-by-side -side battles that are likely to unfold my goodness these radicals are so great if you're used to driving road america uh, imagine just dab and a gt3 car particularly as i am imagine just dabbing the brakes dropping it into fifth and then flooring it up that hill it's the the ground effects are phenomenal in these cars. That's what they're built around, and uh, that's what they're very good at doing. Here is uh, Samir Kadara uh, trying to catch up to Boosin and Kirakiopoulos and Sorensen uh, as well. Of course, all of them battling along, but right now it seems the immediate threat is to Boosin. So the uh, driver in Samir Kadara will see uh, what he can do down into turn 10. He's got the slipstream, and I don't think uh, there'll be too much formation flying at this part off at the racetrack for these guys it will be a late move he's going to pull it off and sensibly uh, dips in to the slip stream just behind it doesn't really want to make the move he might get the exit out of turn 10 here though it's a flying exit not enough to uh, send one down the inside into the final corner or even get alongside but it is enough to maybe set himself up for something out of turn one back to the lead of the race then and they're still separated by absolutely nothing at all this race uh, the entire top five building up i think jr into an absolute crescendo the best lap time for all of them is about a tenth of a second separated this includes uh, sixth place as well in fact the entire field only separated by about five tenths of a second in terms of their best lap times there's only one outlier uh, at the moment which is 116.0 from michael uh, doring everyone else lapping comfortably in the one minute 15 so that top five just so so close together We're all lapping in the 115 one uh, 115 two the lowest lap time is the 115 three and between first second and third the gap is literally hundreds of a second in terms of how quickly they are lapping right now yeah fantastic uh train is forming here at the beginning it's caruso from predrick from iani from larson from weaver and the top five. Oh, and there goes weaver around the outside of larson on the entry to turn 10 and he is going to get that done uh larson tries to cover the inside and uh oh my goodness weaver takes the long way around and that will move him up five positions into p4 and uh gosh what i was going to say tom is this train of five you can it's like a brewing storm you can feel something is going to be happening before this one is over and watch weaver cover the inside you know honey badger don't care i'll just take you on the outside and uh sometimes you get you see uh the ability of the car being passed there to work the inside out under the bridge and uh didn't happen that time for larson and these f top gosh these top four or five cars there as you can see from our timing tower separated by two seconds it was more like 1.2 before that run around but uh these changes of positions up front are not over as we're on lap nine of 19. so already uh, about halfway through this race and uh, the battle for the lead stays uh, as close as it was with only five tenths of a second separating them uh, out on the road in terms of the top three your fourth and fifth place runners falling behind a little bit and this time Ianni it may just look to the inside he's taken a swooping line there on the outside line hasn't really worked for him I think his hope was that he continued to get the overspeed and be able to make a move on the inside line but didn't quite materialize a couple of retirements from the race so far Lucas Rice has retired uh, from the race and by the looks of things Gabriel Berger is into the pits what I can only assume is an extended stay at this point so that's frustrating 
uh, for him. Another thing to think about with the Radical Races is Busan now uh, sets the fastest lap of the race, showing just how close it is out there on the circuit. Another thing to take into account is the tyre wear. It's not a huge factor, but it's a factor enough that it can make it a little bit difficult towards the end of the race, Joe. Yeah, absolutely can, especially on some of the tighter tracks. May not be as much of an issue here, but uh, what we've seen in these Radicals is you cannot flog them, flog them, flog them for the entire race and expect to have grip at the end. Uh, they will blow the front tires particularly right off, uh, depending on how they're driven. And this front three, again, of Caruso, Friedrich, and Iani with Weaver and Larson behind, uh, still kind of running in a group here as we watch uh, Kiriakopoulos from Bussin, from Kadura, from During, and Hulkin bringing up the back here. And it looks like, uh, my goodness, yeah, we're down to 12 cars as two have suffered uh, some kind of terminal ending to their race. And here's a little look now. And that is, uh, what is that Braun going around Sorensen there and getting him back into turn? Oh, okay, so yeah, Sorensen around Braun there uh, as he's getting revenge from the uh, turn 10 exchange of positions on the last lap. And uh, Sorensen will immediately move over, try to cover the inside of turn one. And uh, yeah, we're seeing some interesting maneuvers there. Some of these cars going way offline before going back on the racing line, either to break the draft or uh, perhaps avoid it, Tom. Exactly, and I'm just wondering here what Caruso is going to be thinking to himself because he's controlled the entirety of this race uh, so far. And has he controlled it though? This is the question, obviously, to the outside looking in. Looks like very much he is in control of this race as it runs but is he really in control because it's five turns a second he's gaining a little bit of a gap uh, to third place yani's not a huge concern neither is uh, weaver and larson uh, but if frederick wanted to pull the trigger on any one of these laps i'm pretty certain he could yeah absolutely and, and you know you know caruso is thinking that he's uh he's a man on his knees uh, with his head in the guillotine with friedrich that close behind him and uh i promise you that on every one of these laps as they go down the back straight friedrich is lifting uh, instead of trying to make a move so friedrich obviously biding his time to take that last last lap risk that you mentioned and there's Bussin turning under the bridge we've lost Bussin looks like he looped it coming out of 10b and may have struck the uh that inside concrete abutment that has quite a few marks on it from cars striking it over the years so Bussin may be done looks like he has taken a toe so see what happens here and here's Braun going for a little lawn mowing there is that what triggered uh Bussin to go off, or oh, Bussin might oh. have gotten a little smooch from behind. Uh, yeah, did not uh, did not hit anything, but uh, took a toe for took a toe anyway. Uh, I, uh, I initially thought he may have taken some damage, and whoop, yep, there's that little kiss that turned Bussin, and Bussin says, "You know what? I've had enough of this. I'm going to park it and uh, <laughs> try the next race." So looks like Bussin is out. Yeah, plus point his tyres as well, I would imagine, with that huge uh, lockup. So, realistically, you can't really blame him uh, for saying, yeah, that's me, I'll call it a day. Looks like Braun, uh, oh, sorry, Berger, I should say, is back circulating, if I'm not mistaken. He's showing uh, on my screen as, uh, albeit a lap down, but five laps down even, but out of the pits uh, nevertheless. So, we'll see uh, what goes on over there as uh, here is the incident that happened to Berger. This is why uh, he is so far down and trailing in this race. You can see the green car uh, at the top of your picture. I think maybe he got onto the curb and just gets himself spinning around. No, it's okay there. Oh, he gets onto the grass and gets himself spinning around. And we all know the grass is like ice here uh, on iRacing. Far more aggressive than any other sin. Sin. Sim. Yeah, they, they they have tuned that some, but uh, certainly at high speeds in these radicals, you don't want to cross that curb and get in the grass. And uh, here we are back with Caruso from Friedrich from Iani. And watch that gap, folks, as we roll down the back straight. Now about four tenths between Caruso and Friedrich. And we'll watch that drop, drop, drop as we approach the entry to turn uh, 10A. And uh, I, like I said, uh, Friedrich is definitely lifting here. You see it, you see him stop closing there at the very end. And it appears to me, Tom, uh, that uh, Friedrich is going to give a, a roll on the strategy that you were talking about earlier, saving it for the last lap and hoping for the best. So uh, Friedrich banking everything on lap 19 of 19. And you know that that is on Caruso's mind. 
yeah, I wonder if we even see as a battle goes on between Kyrokopoulos and uh, Braun, is it? As Kyrokopoulos loses out on the position to Braun, that's really frustrating for him. Looks back to the inside line uh, into turn one, but Braun has the move sealed up and uh, has no problem with that. Uh, yeah, I think the problem here for Caruso uh, is that he's actually in a situation now where he thinks maybe it's even worth letting him back through. But if you let him back through and all of a sudden he flies off into the distance, I'm not too sure. But either way, we know this is realistically Andreas uh, Frederick's race to lose at this stage. It's all going to be about how Caruso gets uh, aggressive in his defence. I know for one, fighting for a race lead on the final lap of the race, I'm not particularly going to be... Uh, nice with how much room uh, I leave JR. Let's hope that's not the case, but uh, first and second, they're both uh, in the iRacing number system, first and second favourites to win this race. Is this the move finally? Caruso then uh, under pressure. Frederick decides that now is the time to pull the trigger. Goes to the inside line. It's that easy for him, but Caruso defends bravely. Back to the inside line. They stay side by side for the race lead. This is going to allow Yanni back into the equation. The Italian on the outside line as Caruso holds on to the lead. That shows his worth in terms of defensive positioning as uh, Frederick goes back to the outside line here, down into turn one, Caruso to hold on to the lead of the race. Frederick to lead the race for the first time, forced a little bit out wide. It's a fantastic defense from Caruso. Frederick has to tuck in behind, Iani has to tuck in behind, and that is proof that he can defend. Wow, and th that that is the action that I've been waiting for. Holy cow, what car control and what trust between these drivers going side by side, high speed in those radicals. And uh, Tom, I got to tell you, uh, you mentioned it, the, the potential strategy. Um, if I was Caruso here getting toward the end, I might... Uh, uh, accidentally or not, maybe feign a little error here coming out of turn seven to let Friedrich by uh, so that I would have the advantage on the last lap because as it is, um, it, you you see the power of the draft, you see how easy it is to get by. So uh, it, it's uh, be really interesting to see how this unfolds. It certainly would be tempting if you're a Crusoe to let Friedrich through so that you're in P2 on the last lap. And here is Weaver going inside of Larson and he is going to, is that there, was that a pass for a position there or were they running in, running in four or five? It's, uh, I think maybe a little bit of defense, uh, defensive maneuvers that ended up not really doing anything first. A really huge defensive move from Weaver. Uh, might give Larson a bit of an overlap here, but uh, again, not really able to do so. Three laps uh, to go in at the race, four laps to go in the race, uh, I should say. And still two tenths of a second between Caruso and Frederick. It'll be interesting now to see uh, as we see Braun battling along with Kirikopoulos once again. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Frederick has pulled the trigger for now and he's going to wait until the final lap again. Uh, or if he does indeed this lap uh, try and go for the lead once more. This lap he hasn't done it, so on lap 17 will that be the question? Yeah, we've uh, 16, 17, 18 and 19, so we're going to have four more opportunities here into turn 10 for Friedrich to uh, weigh his options, and you see that gap closing down. The draft is so powerful, and uh, is this Caruso letting him through? Um, Boy, it, it, it kind of looked that way to me, but now Caruso's going to peek it back to the inside. Oh, my goodness. Maybe a, a little, uh, I don't know what you would call that, a little head fake there. And uh, Caruso is going to cross the line in P1 again after it looked like Friedrich had the position in the bag here as we begin the next lap. And we're going to be side by side again into turn one. That is Caruso on the inside. Friedrich will have the outside right up to the grass. Iani smacking his chops back behind this, and it's going to remain Caruso from Friedrich from Iani. And this is the kind of action, folks, that you should tune in 2100 GMT every Friday to witness these radicals and their drivers are absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. And this has been a fascinating race side by side virtually for the last three laps between our top two. And I imagine that will continue. Lap 17 of 19, so two and a half laps to go from this point in the race. Next lap will be the penultimate lap. And uh, I think Frederick's going to get a move on here, frankly. And he has the best view in the house. He's not got any pressure from fourth and fifth. He knows if these two 
trip over each other, of which there is a high probability uh, that he is going to be in position to slide through and take that victory. But here we go, down the bigger back straight once again. Frederick to the outside line. Caruso defends the inside line, but he's not going to defend as firmly this time. However, on the brakes, he's just a little wow. bit stronger and gets ahead into the second part of the chicane, 10p, and is able to hold on to the lead. And now all of a sudden, Iani brings himself into the equation. If he can get through on this lap, that final lap all of a sudden becomes about fighting for the lead of the race. And he's going to give it a go here down into turn one, but again, has to tuck in behind, can't get the overlap. And we'll go back to that after the race and, and take a look at that in slow motion, man. Uh, the way that Caruso was handling the brakes on that radical into turn 10 on the inside, you could see the car wiggling. That is absolute threshold braking on a car without ABS. Holy cow, that is outstanding work by Caruso as that battle continues to rage. And we're going to jump back and take a look at Braun looking ahead to Kyriakopoulos. Looks like about a 0.5 gap. And again, 0.5 well within the draft range here. So uh, Braun may have a crack at Denis coming out of turn seven and onto the back straight. So we'll have to keep an eye on that gap and see if it ticks down. Yeah, it's 0.5 right now. And back to the front. Here's Caruso starting to weave to break the draft again. He's going to cover the inside and giving Friedrich the outside look into 10A. And again, Friedrich not able to do anything with that. Caruso so good on the brakes. Holy cow. So good indeed. And now we've got one final tour uh, of this circuit to try and uh, discover who's going to win this race. And Frederick's getting a move on. White flag in the air. Frederick to the outside line. We'll try and sail around the outside into turn one. He's tried this before and almost runs out of road. It is a carbon copy of what happened at just a couple of laps ago. Tries to get the exit again as they go down the hill through the S's. Iani's still stalking this battle, knowing that, as I said, if a triple from either of these guys uh, can take him into the equation to win this race. But right now, Frederick just looking for the run. He needs to get in the slipstream he needs to set himself up two uh, major breaking zones to come this is the first of them as they go into turn seven they'll come out of the corner and start to look or turn six and then into turn seven then they'll look down the big straight this is the final opportunity for frederick who has been trailing virtually all race long to try and get himself in to the lead of the race and the win of the race on the final lap of the race he's all the way behind he's in the slipstream he looks to the outside Ooh. there's contact between the two of them and it ends in tears Iani looks uh, sorry not the Iani Caruso looked to dummy the inside line as I hear goes Iani he wants the lead if he can avoid, take it just trying to capitalize on them tripping over each other he's to the outside line we're gonna have a photo finish I think for the line, Iani on the outside line. Frederick will win it, but only by five hundredths of a second. JR, I'm trying to collect my thoughts because I saw what <laughs> happened. Caruso defended the inside line, and then I think on the outside line, and Frederick just looked to the outside himself. It was a late move, and I have to say, I would probably blame Caruso on that one. Yeah, we'll have to take another look at that. And, uh, you know, I was just going to say that uh, Iani could not be counted out of that. We've done many races here, and we have seen some two-for-one moves there into turn 10. And uh, Iani uh, put himself in position and tried to take the outside into turn 10B. Um, we often see people try the over-under there and take the inside through the second part of that chicane with success. But Iani elects the outside, and that allowed Friedrich to kind of keep the door closed closed coming onto the front straight and what a finish I, i'm uh, not hearing a lot of salty language over ride racing comms which sometimes occurs here so uh i guess caruso uh not too upset about that and here is the replay riding along with friedrich now and uh oh gosh yeah it uh it did appear that caruso was reacting to friedrich's move to the inside which uh is on the ragged edge of being a potential no-no so and here here it is from overhead caruso covering the inside starts to drift back over and friedrich dodges left caruso seems to follow him yeah gosh uh, uh, i <laughs> that that is a very close one tom and I'm, I'm glad i'm not an official for this race yeah i, I still think he just it seemed like a needless move, if you know what I mean, uh, to go to the outside line. I, I'd call it a racing incident, if anything, from my perspective, it, it, it's Caruso's fault. I think you're allowed to dummy, and, and Caruso just hasn't quite judged the overlap. 
However, you, you, you have to give a, a lot of credit to him. He, he drove well in this race, and it's an unfortunate end in any case. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't like to see it end like that. That is unfortunate, but uh, yeah, what a fantastic battle. And once again, these radicals do not fail to disappoint. Uh, another fantastic race. And Caruso, despite getting significant damage from the uh, concrete wall there, manages to hang on for a third place. So he'll get the podium and we'll get those results up for you here directly. And uh, my goodness, what a race, Tom. And uh, between those high speed corners, uh, the high risk moves into turn one and down that back straight, Road Atlanta has served up another fantastic race here in the Radical SR10. And there are your final results, or there were your <laughs> final results. It, it is going to be uh, Andreas Friedrich and P1. Iani there is there to pick up the pieces after that contact between Friedrich and Caruso to get a P2. Caruso saves the podium and crosses the line in P3. Then it's Larson from Weaver, Sorensen, Braun, Kyriakopoulos, Hulkinen, and Kadura are your top 10. Then Michael During, Gabriel Berger, Bussin, and Lucas Rees, who I believe uh, finished that race. Um, in his transporter with a cold beverage in his hands is he in there 16 laps down so he he has crashed out of this one and uh my goodness that was absolutely fantastic tom uh what what are your thoughts uh, after that fantastic battle uh, I, i'm disappointed at how it ended and i think caruso will be disappointed as well i suppose i think frederick will be disappointed as well they strike me as people who are very competitive uh, and wanted to see that race end. But we got a good photo finish. Five uh, one hundredths of a second is not a great deal at all, even in a radical. Although, it doesn't top the closest finish I've seen around this track. Uh, I don't believe many people will have seen it, but uh, myself and Ron Morn saw an identical finish at this track once. But it takes second place, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Boy, oh boy, that was a fantastic race. And uh, I'm taking a peek outside uh, in the driver's waiting room. I'm not seeing anybody stopping by to talk to us. So uh, that is going to wrap it up. You owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS.